Hey everyone, All Things Middle Earth here with a quick video guide on what happens when you switch factions in the Lord of the Rings Rise to War. Now, I already made a video talking about how you do this. It's very simple. I'm not going to go into it. If you want to see that, I'll link it up in the top right of the screen. Uh, but there's a few details I think are good to clarify uh, for when you switch factions that uh, I just want to make sure everyone's aware of. So this will be a relatively short video. Um, but first, uh, first of all, obviously, the main thing is that you're going to lose all of your tiles. So depending on how much you've been playing, this may or may not be a big deal. Uh, on both my accounts, I was nearing the 200 mark and I had that many tiles. So I took a pretty big hit to switch over here. So be, a, be aware of that when you're changing. You are going to lose all these. And the later in the season uh, that your server is, the less tiles are going to be available for you. So in this server, there's quite a bit around me. This is not too bad. Uh, in my uh, good server, I'm playing as Erebor now. Uh, everything around me is taken kind of except for like the 200 and up tiles. So it's nice that I can actually, I can get those. Uh, but it's going to take a long time to get so many of those that make up the difference for like all of the 130s and 170s and so on that I had. So be aware of that when you're changing. Obviously, you can't pick where your settlement goes, uh, but maybe check out the place you're planning on going to and see if it looks like it's very, very full. Like obviously, I switched to a faction that was full. A spot had opened up and I was able to get into it. So there is a little bit more going on when I switched here. Mordor wasn't full. So be aware of the size, uh, the space that your faction may have when you are switching because you will lose yours and need to go out and, uh, and gather more of those. So that's one thing to note. Uh, a couple other things to note that, that I didn't realize as well. Uh, again, they make sense, but just want to make sure people are clear on them. Uh, in terms of your buildings, if you have anything building uh, currently, it will not continue over. And so if I have things that have any amount of time left, they're just going to be stopped. So um, it could be worth it to wait until your stuff is done building. That way you don't lose the resources you put into that. Um, I was kind of just hopping back and forth on my decision and wasn't sure. So I did have a few things going. I decided to bite the bullet, um, you know, but if you're trying to play smart, trying to save resources, uh, let stuff finish upgrading before you switch because you do uh, lose that progress. Yes, you you still keep all your levels uh, and uh, all the buildings are kind of transferred to what would be the equivalent for for that. You know, we were playing as Angmar, we had the Northern Quarters. So now the Northern Quarters has kind of switched to Morgul Quarters and what we had there. So um, that's something to keep in mind there with your buildings you have going. The other thing, and probably the last kind of major thing, is the levels that you put into your unit's abilities. So, for example, um, one that I had upgraded all the way was the tracker. I'll pull it up so you can see it here. But torture and mounted, these skills I had maxed out on my other one. And they are both level 1 out of 10 now. And I can't remember if this says this in the description of things you lose, but I was kind of surprised by it. Again, not the end of the world, but if you've been playing for a long time and you've maxed out like a lot of like tier three troops that cost a lot, you're, that's going to really set you back uh, the gold costs there. Even if you double your levies all the time, that's still just going to take a lot of time to get those back. So again, your abilities will reset to level one. Other than your hired units, it seems like hired units do keep their abilities from what I could tell. But everything else, uh, it doesn't matter if you had the exact units. Like I had trackers on my Angmar one or if, if there's an equivalent unit to trackers uh, for um, you know a different faction. It doesn't seem to matter. If, if it's a conscriptable troop, the level of their abilities resets. So something to keep in mind there because, again, especially if you've spent a lot of gems... Uh, doubling your gold levies that that's that's kind of a lot of gems out the window all of a sudden so make sure it's something you want to do again i'm still kind of on the fence with this obviously fine with doing that but i'd really like to open the conversation up to the community and hear what everyone thinks about switching factions it seemed like for me there were uh, especially in my main server it seemed like there were a lot of people funneling to just a couple of factions and it left some other factions pretty weak um, obviously, some of that's out of your control. You know, I think in, in Gondor, there was some leadership and people that left and went to different servers and, and whatever. And I get it. It's a game. Stuff happens. Uh, but if you do get caught in a bad situation like that, where maybe um, you've just kind of got a, a, a not amazing start as your faction, uh, is it reasonable to, to switch? Or does that kind of just continue the game of um, everyone f funneling and Again, I think it's a reality of a war type game like that, but I'm definitely interested in what people have to say about it. Because uh, again, I could go either way on it. If the if the devs came out and changed something, I'd, I'd say, all right, cool, that's, that sounds good. And if they just said, hey, no, that's how it's supposed to be. It's a war game. There's going to be shifting in powers. And uh, the, the better that you do earlier on, the more you're going to draw in people to your faction. Um, I think there could be some implementations on 
you know, maybe maxing the amount of people that can join a faction at any given time uh, before the server is necessarily full. So um, I don't have to try and hopefully keep things balanced. But again, I don't know. I'm not I'm not kind of thought too much about it, but I am curious what everyone thinks. So again, those are just a few clarifications I think that are good to get out there for uh, what happens when you do change factions. And more than anything, I'd love to get the conversation started with people in the community. So if you have any ideas of how to address this, uh, if it even needs to be addressed, if you find it as a problem, or uh, if you just think that's a normal part of a game like this, I'd love to hear that down below. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, consider that subscribe button to join our fellowship here on YouTube. I also stream over on Twitch, and that's linked down below. So if you want to come hang out, we play Rise Tour and other Lord of the Rings and Middle Earth themed games, then we'll be over there doing that several times throughout the week. So hopefully we'll see you there, and I hope you have a good one.